The Chambers of Zeric is one of the longest grinds in the game. 67 million points is the expected number to get 12 out of 12 drops. And doing 18 minute solos, this will take around 670 hours. 34 minute solo CMs will save around 40 hours on the grind. And mega scales are an alternative method. But most people don't have the facilities to do mega scales on their own, especially iron men who cannot pick up dropped potions in the raid. This video will show you how to do easy 3 plus 12s without needing multiple alts, chins, or having to drop pots into all. Crucially, these methods can be done on teams with all Iron Men, getting up to 130,000 points per hour, making it substantially quicker than the current meta. You won't need max gear, you don't need chins or blood shards, you don't need loads of potions, and this makes it perfect for Iron Men just trying to grind out items. The methods are also surprisingly easy, and most of the raid is very AFK. You can do these methods without any ults, but a single ult with Shazian armor and a reasonable defense level will make things quicker. An ult like this will only take you a few hours to get ready, and will more than pay for itself over time. The clips in this video will show how to do every room both with and without an ult. Please don't be daunted by the thought of a 3 plus 12, everything still hits quite low, the ulting required isn't intense, and once you've done a couple I'm confident that you'll find them much more laid back than regular raids. In teams of three, you can also expect to see a purple every three raids, which makes them really fun to do. This is the gear that you want to be starting the raid with. Everyone will be wearing their max barrage gear on the Ancient Spellbook and will be barraging every room except for Guardians. We then have three roles with slightly different setups. There are two DPS roles, Mage and Melee, who will be camping their respective styles during Ulm. If one of your team has a Shadow, they should Mage, and if someone has a Scythe, then they should Melee. For this reason, if you're missing max gear in one style, you can still do 3 plus 12s efficiently without missing out on points. The hybrid role will do both mage and melee during Ohm, and won't be taking any hits as a result, so they can comfortably cope with the extra switches required. All three roles bring a four-way range switch for head, and you can bring more switches once you're comfortable. The DPS roles bring a mage cape and a book of the dead in order to spell book swap to thralls for Ohm. They also bring different runes to the hybrid role because of this. The hybrid role will bring a light bearer and an accursed scepter instead. All three roles bring max melee for guardians, with the DPS roles bringing Elder Mauls or Dragon Warhammers, and the hybrid role bringing a BGS. Everyone also brings a pickaxe, defender, and an altar ring for guardians. Mage will bring a shadow, melee will bring a scythe, and the hybrid will bring both a shadow and a scythe. Finally, bring either an imbued heart or a super combat potion, depending on your first room, and a couple of prayer potions as well. The setups you take into Ohm I'll show later on in the video. And note that if you don't have a Kodai, you'll need to bring water runes as well, or you can replace your fire runes with steam runes. And finally, these are just example setups. You can bring more range switches, a Raylos, a ZCB, a lockpick, or whatever you want as you get more comfortable. And the gear can also easily be downgraded. A Lance is more than good enough to do the melee roll effectively, and a DHCB or both is fine for head phase too. If you do use an ult, which I highly recommend that you do, these are some example gear setups for different budgets. The setup on the left is more than good enough. Monsters don't hit very high in 3 plus 12s, and you do always have combo eats in case things get rough. The most important item is the Staff of Light, which has a special attack which blocks 50% of melee damage when you activate it. If you don't use an ult, you'll need to lure certain rooms yourself, which means bringing in Shazian armor and a few extra brews to get you through the first room. I highly recommend taking the time to make a tank ult. Shazian armor takes 5 minutes to get and defense levels are very easy to AFK on the side. And they will save a lot of time doing 3 plus 12s. For scouting, we're looking for a very specific rotation. We always want guardians, mystics and shamans. For puzzle rooms, we always want tightrope. Then either crabs or thieving are fine for the second puzzle room. In terms of layouts, there are four which we can run. The first two, shown at the top, are slightly better because you can prep after just one combat room. And the second two below require a combat room and a puzzle room to be completed before you can prep. 
if the puzzle room is thieving or crabs, then that's fine. But if it's tightrope, then you'll be doing an extra room without an overload. Regardless, all four are worth doing. I'm just highlighting the difference in case you decide to buy scouts rather than scouting yourself. It takes around five minutes on average to find a scout yourself. So you can either scout with your alt during ohm or scout as a team after each raid, which will only take a couple of minutes. Since you'll always be doing the same rooms in a 3 plus 12, I'm going to stretch the guide as a walkthrough of an example raid. Your scout probably looks something like this. You'll have prep room and scabs early and one combat room to do before you get seeds. The first combat room will be either guardians or shamans and the second one will always be mystics. The last combat room will then also be guardians or shamans. You'll have two puzzle rooms somewhere throughout. One will be tightrope, which I'll cover in the guide, and the other will be either crabs or thieving, which you both do as normal. So let's look at these rooms one by one. We'll run through the scav room and the prep room, and the first room we have is guardians. Guardians are super simple. On each guardian, you will use your Elder Maul and Dragon Warhammer specs evenly, and then use your BGS evenly as well. If you have an alt, then you can bring a BGS on it as well in order to speed this process up. Despite popular belief, the Dragon Warhammer and Elder Maul can actually drain defense on Guardians despite hitting a zero, which makes it reasonably easy to get their defense levels all the way down to zero, which speeds up this room significantly. After you've got their defense drained, you just do Guardians like normal. If you kill one early, you can pick up the seeds on your alt and go back and plant them straight away. After you have seeds, you'll go back and prep. And if you haven't already got secondaries from scavs, then do that now. Everyone on the team will prep two overloads, two enhances and eight restores. Then DPS rolls will prep 16 brews each and the hybrid roll only preps 10. While you're prepping, the alt can go ahead and start luring mystics. And there are three different mystics layouts, which all have different lures, which I'll walk through now one by one. The first mystic room I'll call the main room. Here, one person, who I'll call the tank, is going to run through the room getting all the mystics to mellow them. If you have an alt, they can do this while you prep, and you just want them to equip their Missouri armor or dehyde. The three mystics on the west side don't need to come around the northwest corner, you can just leave them on the west for now. And once your first account has all the mystics meleeing them, just sit somewhere safe like this tile here. Once you're here, you're going to bring your second account in. They will get the remaining mystics on the west side to melee them and then lure them around the northwest corner so that they're along the northern edge of the room. This is a bit fiddly, uh, but you can see how it's done here. I won't speed it up just so that you can see the tiles I'm stepping to. So you can see that you just take them one by one, stepping north, dragging them a bit east, and then going back to let the next mystic come around the corner. Once the second person has all the mystics lured to the north side, they go west and stand on the tiles shown to safe spot them. The tank is then gonna run to the exact same tile and melee the extra mystics on their way in order to get all the mystics aggro on them instead. Here, one of the mystics at the back starts maging, so I just run back to get it to melee on me. And then, as I said, run to the safe spot, meleeing any mystics which aren't already aggro on you. Next, you want your third person to follow the second person. So this is both people who don't have any mystics aggro on them. And then you're going to do the following follow pattern under the first mystic. So step to the tile shown and then follow the third account. Then on your tank, just step a tile north and let all the mystics lure on top of each other. And then once they're all on the same spot, everyone can step back to the safe spot one tile south and start barraging the mystics. Note that it's not worth using a salve here as the bonuses of the salve only apply to your main target. So just use your occult necklace. The next room is the CM room. So this room has the same layout as in CMs 
and this one is quite similar to the previous room but a little bit easier in a way so firstly the tank is going to run through and get every mystic to melee them exactly the same as last time just making sure that these first two mystics come around the north side of the room like this then they'll run south getting all the mystics to melee them and once they're all meleeing the tank the tank is going to go back north and now they want to lure the two southernmost mystics around the corner to the south and you'll see why we need this in a moment. You can see these two Southern Mystics come around the corner past that red tile. So now the tank will go back south, making sure the Mystics are all still meleeing them. And once the tank has them all meleeing, they will just go back to that red safe spot tile shown here. And this is all the Mystics lured for the first part of this. Next, we'll switch over to the second account. And similar to the previous room, you want a third player to follow the second player. And player two is just going to come to these marked tiles here and do the exact same follow pattern as before. So you can see now in first person how to set this up. And this is the same as the last room as well. Once that's done, we'll switch back to the tank. The tank can put on their tank gear. Uh, they should be wearing um, you know, your full justy here step to this tile here which is very important and the mystic you stand under will eventually step a tile north and then all the mystics can lure onto that same spot the tank can move two tiles east to get the following mystics just to come down a bit then step back to the same tile and again just brew as they hit you and wait for them all to stand on the same spot then same as before just move to the safe spot tile and everyone can start barraging Finally, there's one more Mystics layout. It's worth noting that I'm pretty sure you won't ever get this layout as long as you scout one of the four rotations that I mentioned before. But I did figure out how to lure this room as well, just in case you can get it, or just in case people decide to do Mega Scales with different scouts. This is quite similar to the first lure. So the tank will get the mystics to melee them and then they just come south uh, to a spot that's safe from the mystics like this one here then as before the second account is going to come in uh, run to the north side and get those two remaining mystics on the north side aggro on them Once the second account has the two northern mystics uh, in melee mode, they will lure them west and try and bring them south around the corner. Unfortunately, I'm out of range here, so you can't really see the mystics moving, um, but hopefully you understand the idea. And uh, when I move back north on the tank, you'll be able to see how they're set up. So it's a bit fiddly, uh, same as before, um, but it shouldn't take too long and you can see the tile that the second account steps to and that will be our safe spot once they're lured the tank can put their tank gear on and step north again making sure the mystics are all still meleeing and as before just hitting these last two mystics so that all the mystics in the room are aggro on the tank then just as before you want the third player to come into the room They'll follow the second player, which won't have anyone on them. I accidentally misclick here on the tank, uh, but it doesn't mess anything up. So here you can see the second and third accounts, and I just get the third account to follow the second one. And then just like before, you're gonna set up that exact same follow pattern on the tiles shown here. Once those accounts are doing that follow pattern and the mobs are transparent, you're gonna step under here on the tank which is similar to the second one. And eventually the mystic that you step under will move a tile south and let all the other mystics lure in. Then just like before, step back to the safe spot. Everyone can step here and start barraging the mystics. One thing worth noting is that the mystics will occasionally send a mage hit your way. So just send a blood barrage every now and then to heal up and you'll be absolutely fine. After mystics, you might have a puzzle room 
Um, if it's thieving or crabs, that's fine. And if it's tightrope, just skip to the next section. Um, but you probably have shamans next. And so the next section of the guide will look at the shaman's rooms. Again, there are three different layouts with three different lures, which I'll talk through now one by one. So the first lure I'm going to call the loop lure because it has this big loopy entrance. So put on your Shazian armor, sip your anti-venom plus, and then get all the shamans aggro on you. If one of them jumps, make sure you stay close so that when it lands, it can still see you and be aggro on you. For this lure, you can see a few tiles that I've got marked. So the first one, which I just stood on, you want to get a shaman to jump there, and that's going to block off some of the other shamans. Then step to this one. This is where you're going to try and get all the shamans to eventually. When they jump, you can step out of range just for the tick they land to avoid some big damage, and then step back under. Again, as they keep jumping, just step out of the way and walk back here until they all jump to where you are. It's quite fiddly and it often takes a while for them to all sync up their jumps. Um, but here you can see they both jump. So I step out, staying close to the wall. And again, don't run away straight away. You want to stay close so that the ones that land see you, stay aggro on you. Otherwise, they can walk out of the safe spot if you're out of range. And then everyone can just barrage. Same as Mystics. The second lure is the CM layout. So this is the shaman layout that you'll get in a challenge mode. So same again, put your armor on, uh, sip your anti-venom and get them all aggro on you, staying close whenever they jump so that they maintain their aggression. And then very similar to before, you're going to stand on this tile where I'm stood. I didn't actually have them marked at this point, but this tile, which I'm now marking. And again, you just want to get one to jump here to act as a blocker. And then this tile now is where you'll be stood to lure them all to. So again, you can step off for the tick that they land just to avoid some damage. If you have your Staff of Light, you can do the special attack just to reduce some melee damage. And then again, just stepping back under the middle tile of the Shamans. Just one more to go here. So I'm stepping out, the ticket lands, stepping back in. Uh, sometimes they do path out, so here you can see that one shaman is two tiles east, so we need to go back in because that one won't get caught by a barrage. So we're back in, we get it jumped, and then we can run to the safe spot. You can see that one of the shamans is one tile north. Um, in this case, that's fine because it's still trapped behind the edge. Uh, so here you can bring all your accounts in and again just start barraging like mystics and like the other rooms. The final layout is what I'll call the box lure. So this room is just a big square and exactly the same as the other rooms. What we're doing here is luring them to the southeast corner. So it already sort of naturally has some tiles blocking it. Um, sorry, it has some edges blocking it. So we're going to step to this tile first until one jumps. That will then block all the shamans from stepping out. Then this is where we're luring the shamans to in the end. So we're just going to stand here until they all jump. At this stage, the room starts getting quite fiddly. Um, so this layout really requires the shamans to be on the exact same tile. So you can see that if there was a shaman sort of one tile west of the rest of them, it wouldn't be caught behind that corner at all, so it would be able to step south, which is where we're going to be barraging from. So this one often takes a little bit longer as you just wait for their jumps to line up for the shamans and um, them all to get into the safe spot. So this one <laughs> takes uh, quite a long time in the end, but I won't speed it up just so you can see how, how long it sometimes does take. Um, but there'll only ever be one or two on you, and you can usually tank that damage pretty fine with the amount of bruise that you bring in. So it's just about being patient. One thing you can do is, as soon as you see one jump, you want to step out. The tick after a shaman jumps, the tile it was on becomes transparent, so another shaman could uh, step out in theory. So you can sort of guarantee that they won't unlure by preemptively stepping the tick you see them get ready to jump. And here we now have them all lured, so you can bring your other accounts in and start barraging from here. 
It's quite worth getting a shaman task if you can, by the way. Uh, after shamans, the only room left is tightrope, which luckily there's only one layout for and it's very easy. Uh, this one's really nice to do without an alt, so there's two safe spots for rangers and mages. So this is the mage safe spot. If you don't have an alt, then you can just go to this safe spot and start attacking and sending blood barrages when you need. If not, get your alt to throw a chin and you want to get them in a box formation. Here you can see they form an L, so I just take another account to attack one of them and bring it around the corner. And now you can see that they're in a two by two box formation. Then your tank can just send a couple of attacks to the close one and everyone can barrage the close one and then it'll hit all of them. Again, if you don't have an ult, just blood barrage and you'll be absolutely fine. Very similar for the rangers. So this is the safe spot for the rangers. Put on your tank gear and again, just send a couple of chins on your ult if you have one. Otherwise, again, just blood barrage. And once they're on you, everyone can just start barraging. Very simple and a nice easy room. This is why it's really important to get tightrope in the puzzle rotations because it's just free points really. Once you've finished all the rooms in the raid, it's time to go into Ohm. Ohm is not hard at all. You can see you've got so many supplies and it doesn't hit very hard. I think around 41 on the last phase. So it's just like a regular trio Ohm. You've got the Mage on the left wearing Max Mage gear and just bring a one-way switch to Hammer or Eldermore. Your melee on the right is camping Max Melee gear and doesn't have any Mage switches. And then Hybrid in the middle has a Light Bearer, still on Ancients and brings both styles and uh, a few less brews than the other roles. Your Mage and Melee roles should Spellbook swap so that they can use Thralls as well now. And here you can see uh, just how we start Ohm usually. So the hybrid can send in a Cursed Scepter spec. The mage can do two or three shadows and then send in hammer or a maul. And the melee will just start with one or two hammers depending on how much spec they have. Phases are about four minutes long. Um, you'll have four phases because we're scaled to 15 people in the raid overall. And the hands have 3,900 HP. The melee hand can cripple if you do more than 5% damage in an 8 tick window. And that 8 tick window is determined from the points that the head turns left or right as long as you have the head mage set. For this reason, you want to try and avoid doing over 195 damage in an 8 tick window. As the hybrid roll, um, it's really important that you either try and keep track of the damage you're doing or try to avoid doing four scythes total in any eight tick window. So when you see the head turn to the melee hand or the mage hand, try and make sure that you only do one scythe on the melee hand before the head turns again. If you just want to relax a bit and can't be bothered doing that, a very easy way to reduce the chance of crippling is just try and make sure that you and your melee are attacking two ticks apart. That means that over 40 ticks where there are five eight tick windows, only in one of those eight tick windows is there a chance of four scythe hitting, which means that the chance of crippling is greatly reduced. On head phase, it's the same as normal, just one person on each side, one person in the middle, and just swapping between who's tanking depending on who has more brews, but you should have loads left at this point. If you get a deathless, with the correct layout, then it will basically always be 290,000 points for a raid, which puts you basically at exactly one in three to see a purple on your team. This makes them really fun to do over a long session. Um, you do get dry streaks, obviously, but then when you're getting lots of drops, it's just back to back to back. The great thing is that all you need really is barrage gear and one good style throw, whether that's a shadow, a scythe or a lance. I hope you've enjoyed and learned something and if you have any questions just let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Good luck.